fingers from the steak. I can feel that dollar in my hands right now. <laughs> Game ain't over yet, Esky. Oh, I don't know. I kind of feel good enough about it to raise that bet, say, to uh, five dollars. How does that hit you? Go ahead, Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Take it. No, all right. Five dollars. Clear out. Clear out. Take a ringer to beat me. You don't want to make that five ten, do you? You got yourself a bet. <laughs> now just kind of stand back, and uh, I'm going to show you what a ten dollar horseshoe looks like when it's being thrown. <laughs> down, boys. My true love is a blue-eyed daisy posting down to Lady Day. If she don't marry me, I'll go crazy. Oh, ding dong, doodle lady day. Back my jet. Who is that? Oh, de ding dong, doodle lady day. So many pretty girls, I can't count them. Oh, de ding dong, doodle lady day. Oh, just some de voice away. Yeah. He's oh, got a voice. Dong, ho, de ding dong, ho, well, I'm gonna de take that voice and I'm gonna cram it right down his dirty throat. Detesky, wait a minute. My true love is a sunburnt daisy. Ho, de ding dong, doodle lady day. She won't work and I'm too lazy. Ho, de ding dong, doodle lady day. Ho, de ding dong, ho, de ding dong, ho, de ding dong, doodle lady day. Well, howdy. Beautiful day, ain't it? Don't you give me none of that beautiful day stuff. Your caterwauling cost me ten dollars. Well, I'm right sorry about that, friend, but I'd take it kindly if you get your hands off my coat. Yeah, I'll take my hands off your coat after I take ten dollars worth out of your hide. <laughs> That's bloody ass! Take your hands off me! <laughs> Now what's going on? I declare it's enough to drive a man out of his mind. I spend 50% of my time chasing illegal whiskey makers and 50% of my time arresting them that drinks it. Roy, we ain't had a drop. I don't care whether you had a drop or whether you didn't. You're still acting like you did. Now I got a place to cool you off. You come on down to that jail. But Roy, come on. Now, Deb burn it, Roy, I know it probably didn't look it, but the fact is that we wasn't really fighting out there. Oh, much. now, entertaining as they usually are, I just don't have no time for a horse cart ride explanation. Horse cart ride? Would it be Ben Cartwright's son? Well, yeah. Well, second cousin Hoss, shake hands with your second cousin Muley. Cousin Muley? Muley Jones.
the way from Wheatville, Missouri, just to see you. <laughs> hey, look. Now, you, boy. You hear that? This fella claims he's second cousin of mine. Look, Hoss, I don't care if this is your favorite Aunt Bertha. There's a $10 fine for each one of you boys for street fighting, and you're either going to pay it or I'm going to lock you up in that pokey one. Now, which is it going to be? Well, looks like this little family reunion just cost me $30. Well, second cousin Hoss, I sure appreciate you paying the fine for me, and I intend to pay you back just as quick as I find myself a job. I'll pay you back tomorrow, Hoss. Don't worry about it, fellas. I'm just lucky to have it. Fact is, I'd have probably lost it to old Eskin at that bourbon horseshoe game anyhow. Oh, Paul! Yeah, they Paul, said I'd I, find you here. I want to introduce you. And they also said that you and Brave Pony had been brawling in the streets. It's all right, Ben. Now, Hoss has paid their fines and they're free to go, and it's a good thing, because I've just been busier than a bird dog hunting that illegal whiskey maker. Why, that number he keeps bouncing that moonshining equipment of his around this territory worse than a kangaroo. Well, boys, I'll leave it with you. Now, Chief Whitebird and I do everything in our power to make a good impression, and what happens? The very day the new Indian agent arrives in town from Washington, my son and the Chief's son are caught fighting in public. Hoss was not to blame, Mr. I don't care who's to blame. Suppose he'd seen you two fighting in public. You know how much depends on this report he's going to be turning in. Now, the only reason your father and I have been successful in fighting this plan to relocate your people is because the Indian affairs in this area have been so good. Well, it's actually all my fault, I Mr. don't man. care whose fault it was. The only thing that matters to me is, what did you call me? Oh, Cousin Ben. I'm your cousin Muley from Wheatville, Missouri. Cousin Muley? I don't know Cousin Muley. He just got here this morning, Paul. Oh, oh I, I, I got a letter of introduction. Mm -hmm. Ben Cartwright, this is to introduce uh, Muley Jones, who is the, uh, the son of Rebecca Jones from the Larson side of the family. He's working his way to California. Any help you can give him will be appreciated. Signed, Ole Jensen. Now, now, Paul, I've heard you mention that name before. You sure have, Ole Jensen. By God, you remember me telling you he could pick me up by the seat of my pants with one hand? Yeah. <laughs> Still alive. How old is he? Must be about 80 years old now. 81 come next October, and he could still do an honest day's work in the field. <laughs> well, I'm sure happy to hear that he's in such good health. Here. Holy Johnson. You're Rebecca Jones's boy. <laughs> well, I'm sure happy to meet you, Cousin Mule. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're going to stay at the Ponderosa with us. Well, thank you kindly, Cousin Ben. <laughs> And I'm sure looking forward to meeting up with second cousin Adam and second cousin Joe. Well, you're sure going to meet him as soon as he gets back from delivering that herd of beef out of Camp Me. Oh, uh, cousin Ben, I'm sure plumb sorry for causing all that ruckus around here this morning. Oh, oh, I guess it wouldn't have made too much difference to me if it hadn't been for the been having a little bit of trouble with the Department of Indian Affairs, and what with this new agent, this Mr. Thornbridge coming out, I, I just didn't want anything to happen to sort of upset the upper cart, so to speak. Paul, what uh, what sort of fellow is this new agent, anyhow? Well, I don't know. I'm just going over to the hotel to meet him. Now, look, I'm fixing to take Mr. Thornbridge out to the Ponderosa. We have some supper tonight. Eh? I want you to be in your best behavior. Oh, yes, sir. And uh, Ray Pony. <laughs> Uh, I've invited your father to come out so they could meet, and I thought it would be good for them to get to know each other. Now, you come out with them. Yes. Now, uh, uh, why don't you show Muley around town? Sure. And then meet me at the hotel in about uh, 30, 40 minutes. Fine, Paul. Uh, cousin Muley. <laughs> well, Muley, what'd you like to do first? Well, uh... Since I had that long, hot ride into town this morning, a nice, tall glass of beer would taste mighty appealing right now. Yeah, uh, it's fine, Muley, but see... Uh, don't let me hold you back, Hoss. I don't drink anyway. You two go on. Well, look, I'll, I'll see you at supper tonight. Sure, see you then. Oh, I hope I didn't hurt hurt his feelings, second cousin Hoss. I, I forgot that Indians just ain't allowed to drink. No, no, it's all right. He, he's a good friend of mine. He understands. Look, that's me and you go get that beer. It ain't every day a man runs into a second cousin. <laughs> Hi, Hoss. Howdy, 
right, Samuel. A couple of beers, please, sir. Oh, now that's a that's gone, guy. Esky, wait a minute. Esky, like now, calm down, too, calm down, calm like down. Calm down. That burn it. Now, I want you to meet my cousin. This here's Muley Jones. Your cousin? Yep. Yeah, I figured whoever he was, you must have put him up to making me lose that game. I didn't put him up to nothing. Now, I want you to shake hands. If you will, I'll forget that $10 you owe me. Now, come on. Shake hands with us. Shake guy. hands? Come on here now. Shake hands. Shake. There. You know, I, Hoss, I ought to make you give me that $10. I ought to won that game, sure. Yeah, I gave your $10 to Roy Coffey. Uh, by the way, where was you when he arrested us? Yeah, well, I, I, I was around there somewhere. Sure you were. Gosh, Cousin Hoss, that, that's $40 I've cost you already, and I ain't even been in town an hour. Oh, forget it, Cousin Muley. It wasn't your fault, no how. You gotta admit, Esky, it was pretty funny when that horse you went flying out over everybody's head. <laughs> you should have seen the expression on old Esky's face. <laughs> well, the one he was wearing when I did see him wasn't so funny. <laughs> oh, I'd like to walk oh, you. Esky, Esky. Esky, Esky, don't appreciate a, a good singing voice when he hears it. And that's a gospel truth, cousin. I tell you, you got about the finest singing voice I ever heard. Well, gosh, thanks, Cousin Hoss. You know, there just ain't no joy in the world that compares to singing for me. There's just something about standing under a big blue sky filled with God's sunshine and gathering up a chest full of fresh, clean air and just letting go. Well, thunderation, man. Let go of one right now. Oh, no, 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 Cousin Hoss. Well, you see, that's part of the reason I had to leave Missouri. Well, well, the folks back there, they just didn't seem to appreciate my singing. Well, that just goes to show you how much they know about singing in Missouri. You're in Nevada now, so just cut loose with one. Uh-huh. Just let out. <laughs> well, all right. Beautiful dreamer out on the sea Mermaids are chanting the wild laurelie. Over the streamlet, vapors are born, waiting to fade at the bright coming morn. Beautiful dreamer, beam on my heart. He as the morn on the stream, land and the sea. Then will all clouds of sorrow depart. Beautiful dreamer, awake unto me. Beautiful dreamer, Awaken to me, beautiful dreamer, wake unto me. It's Hoss and that cousin of his. I reckon my place. Somebody get Sheriff Coffee. Yeah. Sheriff Coffee! of life's busy throng. Beautiful dreamer, awake unto me. Beautiful dreamer.
Uh, Musie. Huh? I tried to stop you before you wrecked the whole dang saloon. Oh, no. I, I, I did it again. Muley, is this the reason they didn't like your voice in Missouri? Uh-huh. Mr. Thornbridge, it surely is a personal privilege for me to welcome you here to Virginia City. Well, thank you, Mr. Cartwright, and I hope my visit is as pleasant as your greeting. Well, I'm sure it will be. I know that when you meet Chief White there and his people... Look, I, excuse me, sir, there, there seems to be some kind of a disturbance Sheriff! over there. Sheriff Coffee! Sheriff! Hey, Roy, what's happening? Somebody's busting up the saloon. Oh, Mr. Thornbridge, this is... Highly unusual here for Virginia City. We never had. Well, I wonder to... what causes it. Let's go take a look. Well... Break it up here, I said. Did I say break it up? Oh. It's you three again, huh? Come on, come on, Roy. <laughs> Go on, you know the way. Oh, there you go on, right down there. Come on. Mr. Cartwright, that young man is an Indian. Yeah, sure is. What is he doing in a saloon? Well, I, I don't know. It's mo most unusual, Mr. Thornbridge. Brave Pony's a fine, upstanding young man. He's... Brave Pony? The chief's son. Oh, this is going to look terrible in my report. One mirror, fifty dollars. Two windows, twenty dollars. Glassware, seventy dollars. Liquor stock, two hundred dollars. Miscellaneous breakage, fifty dollars. Public disorder fine, ten dollars a piece for a grand total of four hundred and twenty dollars. And what kind of an explanation do I get? that Cousin Muley sang the place into a shambles. Boy, you'll hear you. And don't think for one minute that I'm going to accept this cock and bull story. Do you hear me? I hear you, Paul. Honest Pete, I do. Must be the guests arriving. I'll get it. Chief White Bear, welcome once again to my home. Ben Cartwright, I am honored to be your guest, my dear old friend. Thank you, thank you. Brave Pony, good evening. Mr. Cartwright, won't you please come in and sit with us? Hmm. Go your home. Chief White Bear. Mm -hmm. Bring a cigar. Ollie. I'm sorry Mr. Thornbridge isn't here yet, but he should be along shortly. I'm dreaming now of Hallie, sweet Hallie, sweet Hallie. I'm dreaming now of Hallie, and the thought of her is one that never dies. She's sleeping in the valley. I'm the valley. terribly ashamed of what my son Brave Pony told me about She's today. Oh, in the valley. don't worry about that. It wasn't it wasn't Brave Pony's fault. She lies Oh Listen to the Mockingbird Oh Listen to the Mockingbird Would you care for some coffee? Oh, the Mockingbird's huh? still I said, would you care for a cup of coffee? Oh, yeah, oh, thank you Listen to the Mockingbird The Mockingbird, the Mockingbird was singing o'er her grave, and the Mockingbird is singing where she lies. Oh, listen to the Mockingbird. Can you see anything out there, White Bear? No, but my braves out there will protect us. Paul, there ain't nobody out there. 
All the mockingbirds still singing are great. Don't you hear Muley singing? Oh, of course I hear Muley singing. You think I'm deaf or something? You mean that? Well, why didn't you tell me about this? Oh, I was trying oh, to. The there is somebody there. My brains have got him pinned down. The mockingbird was singing are Mr. Cartwright, these savages have tried to kill me. I want to know the meaning of this outrage. Oh, Chief White Bear, this is... This is... This is terrible. Reconsider. You must stay for dinner. You must give us a chance to be most Cartwright, right, I am in no mood for either dinner or explanations. Your cousin Muley, indeed. Mr. Gombridge. Your report is going to affect the lives of over 200 people. Now, before you jump to any hasty conclusions, there are many facts of which you must be made aware concerning the Indian situation here. That is precisely why I made this investigation trip, to gain first-hand knowledge and experience of the situation. And I certainly have done that today. Mr. Thornbridge. Mr. Cartwright, my report will be based on what I see and what I hear myself, not on any amount of talk or persuasion from you or from anyone else. Now, if you don't mind, I would like to leave. Mr. Dalbridge, you must do me one favor, please. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow when, when you've had a chance to have a little rest and things have calmed down, could we have another talk? Very well, if you wish. But I warn you right now, any further talk is useless. Now, Thank goodbye. You. Thank you very much, Mr. Stormbridge. Thank you. Get out, Mark. I'm sorry, White Bear. You will talk again tomorrow. Welcome, North. What are we gonna do today? Any chores I can help you with? No, 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 no chores, cousin. Not for me and you. Not today, no, sir. I've got a little surprise for you. A surprise? You bet. <laughs> well. You see, Paul went into town early this morning to talk to Mr. Thornbridge, an Indian agent. Yeah. He uh, left here the other day and was all fired angry that he wouldn't even talk to nobody. and. Well, Paul went in early this morning to explain to him. What, you mean explain to how it was all my fault? Oh, no. No, no, cousin. You see, Paul just wanted Mr. Thornbridge to know that, well, that it, that it wasn't all the Indian's fault. Now, of course, he didn't fault you none, neither. No, we know it ain't your fault. You was born with that voice. Of course, you ought to, you ought to learn to be a little more careful with it around humans. Yeah. <laughs> I, I sure appreciate you and your pa being so understanding. Yeah, well, we are. We are, especially Paul. As a matter of fact, he, uh, he left you a little gift. Yeah. A gift? Yep. Well, but it ain't my birthday or nothing. Go ahead, old man. I, I don't understand. Well, me and Paul was thinking and was thinking about that letter that you brung with you from Ole Jansen wanting us to help you get on to California. And we ask ourselves, now, how could we best help our cousin Muley get to California? And all of a sudden, the answer come to us that simple. Money. Now, there's enough right there for your stagecoach fare and to put you up in the hotel until you can get a job. Now, we want you to have it. Well, I, I don't know how to thank you, Cousin Hoss. But I can't take your money. Well, I owe you already for a lot of damage I've done. Well, <laughs> I, I better get my things together and get going. Wait a minute. Where are you going? Oh, San Francisco. Uh, thank you, Cousin Hoss. More than I can say. Shh. 
Like I said, Esky, this is the last of this here moonshining that I'm gonna do. Oh, now, come on, Yuri. You ain't gonna let Sheriff Coffee scare you out like this. This is Indian land. He, he wouldn't look here. Well, I, I, I've got a family to think about, Esky. Sheriff Coffee couldn't find this little old still if it took him a hundred years. That's easy for you to say. But it's been me that totes this still around these hills to keep ahead of him. Now, that's the deal we made, wasn't it, Yuri? You make the whiskey and I sell it? I say, let's get out while the getting is good. I, I wasn't going to tell you this, Yuri, until I actually got the money, but I made a deal. With Sam, the bartender, he's going to buy every drop of whiskey that we make at double the price. Double. On account of horse, Cartwright and his cousin, Muley, busting up all his... Like fun, you was going to tell. You was going to sell these jugs at double and pay me the regular. I know you, S.K. What? I swear, Yuri, I don't know how you can look so clean and think so dirty. Uh, all right, all right, so you know. Now, I got to make this delivery. You get back in and get busy and make some more whiskey. No, I I'm through R right now. Double price or not. Now, now hold on. Uh, this business is getting too risky. Well, that is the last time I team up with a yellow belly. Yellow belly. Now, now, hold on. Now, what are you doing there? Wait, wait a minute. What are you doing? Ain't you forgot something, Esky? Well, forgot? Well, what, what, what are you talking about? Well, you haven't paid me for this last batch. I ain't. <laughs> well, I thought sure I did, Yuri. <laughs> Oh, now, uh, of course, uh, you know, you know, boy, I, I, I'm a little hard pressed for cash now. Uh, I, I, I've heard this all before, Esky, and my heart still ain't break. Let's just unload well, now, this now, wagon and wait a minute until you get some hard now, cash. I swear, you are the most nervous man I ever saw. Now, didn't I tell you about the deal with Sam? What's the matter? Don't you trust me? No. Hold on. Boss, sometimes, you know, you make me so mad I could just spit. All right, here. Here, there's enough here for 18 jugs, all right? What are you, what are, what are you doing now? Wait a minute! What? Go, what are you doing? You paid for 18, and you got 18. Now, naturally, boy, you're going to trust me for the rest, ain't you? Naturally. Well, of all the underhanded, conniving, thieving, crooked, backbiting friends I ever had, I never saw anything like it. You better shut that loud mouth of yours before you bring Sheriff Coffee down on us. Well, the next time I do business is gonna be with an honest man. Yellow Billy! Get him! What? Loud mouth! Father, is it to their camp? Oh, about, about a mile or so. Good. <laughs> oh, Mr. Thornbridge, where are you heading? Well, Mr. Thornbridge has uh, kindly agreed to have a friendly talk with the chief before he forms a final opinion, now that he knows why things happened the way they did. Well, good. I'm sure glad to hear that, Mr. Thornbridge. I try to be fair in all my decisions. Uh, horse, uh, things go the way we planned? Well, <clears throat> not exactly, Paul. You see, well, Cousin Muley here decided not to take your gift after all. Uh, not that I don't appreciate it, Cousin Ben. Oh, Muley, you mean you, you're, you're not going to go to San Francisco? Uh, Paul, he's going, but... Uh, Mr. Cartwright, uh, I would like to proceed to that meeting, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, well, of course, Mr. Thornbridge. Everything's under control, Paul. Well, good. I sure hope so. Muley, I hope you have a very pleasant journey to San Francisco. Bye. Bye. Well, thanks again there, Cousin Ben. Cousin Hoss, you have the nicest family I ever see. Well, from now on, Muley, you're a part of it, and don't you forget it. <laughs> oh, golly. You know, I feel so good right now. Do you know what I'm going to do? Uh, Muley, wait a minute. Well, uh, <laughs> I reckon out here in the wide open spaces couldn't hurt nothing. <laughs> Go ahead and cut loose. 
Believe me if all those endearing young charms Which I gaze on so fondly today Were to change by tomorrow And flee from my arms Like weary gifts There's more loud mouths around here. That my loveliness fade as it will. Oh, and around the dear ruin. Where's that voice coming from? White Bear, Brave Pony, uh, this is, uh, thank you. this is, uh, what is this? Why, this, this looks like, uh, smells like, good heavens, it's a whiskey still on Indian land. A Brave Pony, believe me, Mr. Cartwright, this is not ours, we found it. This is your land, isn't it? Yes, but... I've never seen such fragrant proof that our Red Brothers need the protection of a reservation. Mr. Cartwright. Please take me back to town. Uh, Mr. Thornbridge. Please, Mr. Cartwright. You know that we would not have a whiskey still on our land. Well, I know that. But he won't believe it. Someone else was running this still. But even we wouldn't have discovered it if the big noise hadn't broken it. The big noise? Muley Jones? your mouth just once, and I'm calling the sheriff. Now, calm down, Sam. Like I told you, Cousin Muley's on his way out of town right now. We're just passing a few minutes waiting for the stage. Then pass it with his mouth closed. Look at that, fruit jars, and I'm lucky to get those. Every housewife in town made me pay a fortune for them. Give me a whiskey. Give me a whiskey. Very funny. What's so funny about it? I just got to town and I'm thirsty. Look, stranger, the only thing I got to drink is beer. And only got that because it comes in wooden kegs. I don't like beer, only whiskey. Then you better come on back later. I'm expecting a shipment any time now. For whiskey, I'll wait. Any time now? Already a shipment from San Francisco so soon? Never mind where I'm getting it from. You just see to it that your pa makes good for the damages in here so as I can pay for it. Hey, Cousin Hawks, there goes your pa now. Hey, what's he doing going up to the jail? Oh, oh. I don't know, but let's go up there and find out. Sam, we'll be back and finish those beers in a minute. Hi, yes. Right on Indian land, the smell of whiskey was overpowering. It's the most disgraceful thing I've ever seen. Well, now, how about that? Here I've been uh, wearing myself thin just to chase that whiskey still all over this territory. It never did occur to me to look on Indian land knowing Chief White Bear like a... Oh, that's just the point, Roy. You and I know that Chief White Bear's people wouldn't do anything so foolish as make whiskey. Mr. Cartwright, I know what I saw. Hey, Paul, what's going on? Now, Sheriff, your evidence is out there. You can go and see for yourself. As for me, my report is final. The Indians will be moved back to the reservation at the earliest opportunity. And I'm getting the first stage out of here. Goodbye, gentlemen. The reservation? Ben, I'm going to get a deputy and send him right out there now. What happened, Paul? We found a whiskey still right near the Indian reservation. Right after we left you two on the road. 
Your second cousin, Muley's boy, sure smashed a whole bunch of whiskey bottles all around that still. Oh, Lordy. Not again. Yep, again. Boy, you know them Indians wouldn't have a still right there on the reservation. Of course, I know that, and you know that, but Mr. Thornbridge, he don't know that. And they was making whiskey, I'll tell you that. Next stage leaves in about half an hour, and we aren't going to find the culprit in that length of time. Cousin Ben, this is all my fault. And I'm going to find that culprit if it's the last thing I ever do. Cousin Muley, the last thing that you could ever do for me that would be real pleasing would be to get on that stage the way you plan. I'm going over to the hotel, and I'm going to see if I can talk Mr. Thornbridge into listening to one last appeal. Cousin Hawes. I'm sorry. Oh, I know you are, Mealy. That ain't going to help Bray you pulling his tribe none, though. Go and finish that beer we started a while ago. Maybe we'll think of something, huh? Come on. Yeah. Hi, boys. Hey, cousin Hall. Does anything strike you peculiar about that fella? Esky? Everything about Esky strikes me as peculiar. Come on. There you go, stranger. Some of the finest you'll ever taste. I'm sure glad you're back in business. Yeah. Glad to see you back in business, too, Sam. Where'd you get that? Uh, shipment to come in from Carson City. Carson City, my. They ain't been no shipments in from Carson City on wheels in two weeks now. Where'd you get that? Now, Hoss, you ain't got no call to stick your nose in my business. Well, I'm sticking it in. Now, where'd you get that booze? I just sell the liquor. Ain't no concern of mine who makes it. If it come out of that still on that Indian property, it does. Now, you tell me where you got that booze, Sam. You can't force nothing out of me. There ain't no law says I got to tell anybody where I get my whiskey. Now, you ought to know that, Hoss. <sighs> that burn you, Sam. Muley. Thanks to Sam, we got some thinking to do. Cousin Hoss, it better be fast thinking. That stage is due to take Mr. Thornbridge out of here in just about 10 minutes. I know it. Come on, Billy. Hi, Esty. Fine, fine. Sure, so he's wearing a mighty heavy coat for this sort of weather, don't it? Well, didn't you say he was kind of a peculiar fellow, Cousin Hoss? Yeah, but that's mighty peculiar, even for Esky. Go. Thanks, Esky. Yeah. But that's all you can bring in right now. Yeah. What are you talking about? I got another load. <laughs> I'll show you what I'm talking about. Come here. Look. Horse caught right in his loudmouth cousin. Well, what's so important about that? You try to make one more delivery, and he's going to find out who made it. Now, Sam, nobody ain't going to find out nothing. I only got one more load. Now, nobody ain't going to figure out how it got delivered. But I, I tell you what, Sam, you're a nice fella. If it's going to make you feel any better, I'll bring it in the back way this time. Huh? No, Esky. No. Come back here. I don't want Esky. Esky, come here. Esky. I'm going to go on over to the hotel and try to keep Thornbridge from catching that stage. In the meantime, you get back over at the saloon and keep an eye on Esky and Sam, you hear? Right, Cousin Hawes.
Mr. Thornbridge. Mr. Thornbridge. Mr. Mr. Cartwright, I have heard all the arguments in behalf of the Indians that I care to. Now, I respect your faith in White Bear and his people, but concrete evidence has given me the only conclusion that I can accept. Yes, Goodbye. I, I, Mr. Thornbridge, one more day's delay doesn't mean anything to you, but it could mean the peace and happiness of an entire Indian tribe. Mr. Cartwright, please, nothing would make me happier than to discover that these people deserve to remain here. But ever since I arrived, they've been involved in one incident after another. Now, are you sure that one more day in this town won't bring forth still another incident which will put our poor red brothers in an even more unfavorable light? <laughs> That just shows the man was carrying whiskey. What has that got to do with Indians? All right, now, come on, you tell him, Esky. You tell him or so help me. That's I... right, Ben. Now, look, mister, you've caused enough trouble in this town already. And if you don't tell us where you got that whiskey, I'm going to find ways to keep you locked up in that jail for the next 10 years. All right, all right, but, but it ain't my fault. It's all that Yuri's doing. Him and his still on that Indian land, saying we was going to make us a fortune. Well, Mr. Thornbridge? Well, Mr. Cartwright. Come on. <laughs> I assure you my report will be most eloquent on behalf of Chief White Bear and his people. Thanks to Mr. Cartwright. Oh, <laughs> thanks to Cousin Muley here. <laughs> a most remarkable voice. And I promise you to introduce him to people in San Francisco who might help him train it. Well, <laughs> well, well I sure gosh, appreciate thanks. that. Cousin <laughs> Dooley, we're sure gonna miss you. Oh, thank you, second cousin Hoss. I'm gonna miss y'all. And cousin Dan? Well, you're sure welcome here any time at all, cousin Muley. Oh. Well, thank you kindly, cousin Dan. If I ever get my voice trained, I just might take you up on that. Well, you sure should. And I want you to know, I intend to pay you back every cent for everything I broke. Oh, that, that ain't necessary. I'm gonna send you two dollars every month till it's all paid for. Uh, well, if you if you feel like it, sure. Right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Cousin Neely. Have a good trip. Take it easy, Neely. Come with me, my Phyllis dear, to yon blue mountain free, where the blossoms smell the sweetest. Come rove along with me. It's every Sunday morning when I'm by your side. We'll jump into the wagon and all take a ride. Whoa!
You know, Paul, the way I got it figured, that at $2 a month, he ought to be breaking even in about 150 years. If he gets out of town quick enough. 